We now have the great privilege to talk to the President of the Republic of Estonia, Mr. Thomas Henrik Ilves. Mr. President, uh, Estonia used to be one of the fastest growing economies in the world for, for a couple of years. This year it is expected to shrink about 10%. Why is your country hit by the downturn so badly? Well, I think there are a number of reasons. Um, uh, most importantly is that uh, uh, with the loss of markets, uh, thanks to, I mean, there's a country that uh, was, uh, did a lot of uh, con subcontracting, and when, when uh, Ford has a problem, Volvo has a problem, and then uh, we have a problem because we supply Volvo with parts. I mean, that's one reason. Uh, certainly the, um, the, uh, the drawing up of finances has, uh, has impeded has impeded uh, a number of projects as well. And uh, I think third of all, a uh, major factor was a housing bubble that was fueled by cheap loans for many years. It's more or less the same thing as in uh, Ireland and Spain where, uh, where people were making, where the uh, real estate prices were rising so quickly that uh, you should wait until later. Third reason uh, is a large uh, real estate and housing bubble, uh, analogously to other rapidly growing uh, areas such as, say, Ireland and uh, Spain, where uh, so much money was being made from uh, real estate that, uh, in fact, even companies that were doing altogether different things began to uh, put their money into real estate, not their primary business. And so when the, uh, when the real estate bubble popped, then uh, they were in trouble. So those three, I think, are the major factors for why we're experiencing this, uh, this downturn in Estonia. Uh, generally, Estonia is seen as a very innovative country with a highly entrepreneurial and forward-looking business mentality. Against this backdrop, how does the hard landing affect the lives and also the morale of the Estonian people? Well, I'd say, first of all, I mean, entrepreneurship, if you can't get loans, uh, is difficult. So that's, I think, one of the big problems. And the morale, well, we still have, uh, I mean, we have, a, we have a fairly high rate of unemployment now, uh, over 8%, so moving towards 9%. Uh, several years ago, we had, um, we had about one and a quarter percent unemployment, which is far too low, in fact, because that's, I mean, full employment is four percent, so we are, in fact, we're so in a very overheated economy. Uh, people are having to adjust to this. Uh, fortunately, we're perhaps in better shape than some other countries because uh, for ten years, since 1998, Estonian governments have consistently put money into a stabilization reserve, which meant that at the beginning of the crisis, we had 10% of GDP in reserves. Uh, not that we have that, that much anymore, but uh, as opposed to some other countries, we did have, uh, we did, we did have the reserves to, uh, to cushion ourselves. We didn't have to borrow any money, and in fact, Estonia, again, has, the government has borrowed virtually no money uh, and has uh, so a really foreign, I mean, there's virtually no state debt. Um, and the little debt that we have uh, that goes into the state, that number comes from local governments. Uh, but uh, the, the, the government, the national government itself, has not borrowed money. So that puts us again uh, in a slightly better position. That means the, the uh, pressures on the currency are much lower than the countries which have, uh, have large deficits or countries that have uh, large loans. What is the origin of a sustainable path of economic development in the future uh, in Estonia and in the Baltic states as a whole? Well, the Baltic states are different, so, uh, so uh, different countries have different paths. Uh, and I can't really comment on other countries, but certainly in my own country, um, uh, our successes have come from, uh, from very innovative solutions to issues. I mean, Skype was invented in Estonia, so... Uh, the voice over internet protocol is an Estonian invention. Uh, we need more things like that. Uh, that's certainly how I see Estonia developing, is uh, making use of the uh, very creative, innovative talent that we have. And of course, Skype is not doing badly right now. Um, but uh, rather, they've uh, 
for tax reasons, moved <laughs> to Luxembourg. <laughs> but all of the innovation, continue, I mean, the headquarters for innovation uh, are, remains in Estonia. Uh, tomorrow you will take part in a panel discussion about new challenges in Europe 20 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Is there a common understanding in Europe of what these challenges are? Uh, clearly not, <laughs> because if we knew what they were, we'd have a common approach. But certainly I would argue that uh, uh, given the, the, the massive changes that have taken place since the Cold War, that... Um, we need to put the current crisis in perspective that uh, that uh, sort of the doomsday scenarios that we hear well uh, let us let's look at where we were in 1989 uh, before the decision on the part of the Hungarian government to take down the barbed wire between Austria which then led to the collapse of the of the DDR the collapse of the Czech Czechoslovak communist regime that, uh, well, let's ha have a little perspective on this, that even in terms of the, um, the decline in GDP in Europe right now, uh, well, uh, let's look at where we were in 2002, 2003. We were clearly much, much better off, all of us, than we were in 1989. But that's where we're uh, sort of even the worst predictions for the economic slowdown place us. Mr. President, thank you very much for this talk.